Welcome to Piano Video Lessons Year 1, Unit 4. First, a big shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. To find out about the benefits of becoming a patron, click the info card. In today's lesson, we're going to learn about transposition. So this is video number 54 on YouTube, and it's lesson 6 of Unit 4. In our previous lesson, we learned to play the song called A Dance by Cornelius Gurlitt. And if you haven't already learned this piece, you must. Uh, in order to play this lesson, you need to know this piece, you need to know it well. You need to know how it feels in your fingers. You need to be able to play it without thinking too much. You need to just flow and you need to know it well. You also need to be really uh, efficient and well versed in lesson number four, which is video 52, which is our finger gym. And the finger gym had us playing in different keys, just in the pentascale position, just a five finger position. So go back over those if you haven't gotten really comfortable with them. And if you are comfortable with them, then you can, you're ready to jump in. You might just watch this to see what's going to happen. So I'm going to grab out the uh, dance video, uh, sheet, and I'm also going to be able to flip back over here to my pentascales. So I'm just going to put these on side by each. Uh, you might want to come on over to pianovideolessons.com if you're not there already because all of these printables are available and you can also find all the lessons grouped together with a nice sidebar um, index. Okay, so basically we're talking about transposition today. And transposing means taking a piece of music that you can already play, like, and playing it starting on a different note and just moving it around the piano, having it sound the same, but not starting on the original key. So we know how to play our pentascales transposed. We've been doing that. This has exactly the same sound as this. Even though it starts on a different note. The patterns are the same, the finger numbers are the same. So that's what we're going to do effectively when we transpose a piece of music, like this dance. I've chosen this one to get us started because it doesn't leave this finger scale position, this five finger pentascale position. Everything we play in this entire song stays in place, which simplifies our transposing experience. So it's in the key of C. That's where it's written originally. You can tell because there are no sharps or flats written uh, at the beginning here or anywhere in the music, and it ends on the note C. Those are the main clues that we're in the key of C. So if we think of what happens here, the pattern is start on thumb, go up to five. Start on thumb, go up to five. Start on two, skip to five, and repeat. So if we wanted to take this and move it to G major, we'll just put our thumb on G, and we'll do the same thumb up to five, two up to five, and repeat. So that sounds just like we had in the beginning. Now, key of G is not too tricky, because remember when we did the pentascale, we didn't need any black keys. So it feels identical. If we closed our eyes and we, weren't, we didn't have uh, pitch recognition, some people have perfect pitch and they can hear that this is a G, um, just like some of us see red is red and green is green. Well, actually, most of us do. Um, but some people can hear those pitches and know their name. Not everyone. Most people can't. Um, when we play the F pentascale, it feels different because we have one black key on our fourth finger. When we play the D major pentascale, it feels different because we have one black key on our middle finger. I'm going to choose D major as the, as the example today for transposing the dance. And I'm going to play this in the key of D major. Mostly, this one's a little bit easier than F because finger three has an easier time resting itself on a black key because it's a bit longer for most people anyway. Finger four on a black key. Some beginners have the, um, the tendency to do strange things with their wrists and make it feel awkward. Really, you just need to move into those black keys and play in here because you can play these keys anywhere at all on the piano. You don't have to stick back here to play. Most of us tend to just do it to stay away from the black keys, but once you're playing on black keys, you've got all this area to move your hand in. So the first line of a dance, then in the key of D, is going to go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, two, five, five, five. So that's easy enough, but don't think of C here. Don't think C, D, E, F, G, because wow, you look down, you're like, oh, I'm not on Z, I'm on D. This is strange. It's okay. It's okay. Now we're on line two. It's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, two, five, five, back to one. 
All right, so if this isn't comfortable with you already, then you should go back and play the entire thing just in the key of C, where the fingerings make sense, and start to think more about which fingers you're playing. Moving on to the third line, the fingers have nicely been written in. And remember when we learned this, we remembered that uh, it was two up, down, up, down. So here, two up, down, up, down. I've got my third finger on the black key. One up, down, up, down. Four up, down, up, down. Black key. Three up, down, up, down. Let's keep going. This was two. Two up, up, down, down. One up, up, down, down. Two, five. Five, one. All right, so thinking about finger numbers is the secret, or interval distances, really, thinking about how far apart the notes are, is the secret to playing in a different key or transposing the music at sight. If you want to try this, and you should, you need to start off with the easiest one, which is G major, because if you don't look at your hand and you just look at the music, you can't really feel the difference. Uh, you can't at all feel the difference. Then once you've accomplished playing it in one of the keys, try another one. So let's now try F major. We're going to have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Two, five, five, five. Next line. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Two, five, five, one. Next line. Two, three, two, three, two. One, two, one, two, one. Four, five, four, five, four. Three, four, three, four, three. Next line. Two, three, four, three, two. One, two, three, two, one. Two, five, five, one. All right, now you probably like that you're playing it with the right hand, um, but you might also want to try playing it in the left hand. Let's see, does it say yes? For extra credit, try transposing it with both hands together. So if you are super comfortable playing this hands together just like this, go ahead and try it in the key of G with both hands. Don't look at your fingers because they're on the wrong notes, but it feels the same. Now just try it in the key of D. I'd say, Lisa, why in the heck would I want to do this? Well, a few reasons. One is it's a fun brain puzzle. Uh, another is that if you're playing this with another instrument, uh, like a guitar or a tuba, and they need you to play it in a different key so that they can match pitch more easily, you're able to do it. Or if you had a piece of music that someone was singing and the key you were in was unreachable for them, either too high or too low, then you could adjust your key so that they could sing with you more comfortably. So that's the basics of transposition. I hope you enjoyed this. It's something interesting. We are going to look at it a bit more at a later time, but for now, that's just going to get your feet wet. The next lesson is going to be short and sweet. We're just going to review harmonic and melodic intervals uh, to remind us what those look like and feel like, which will also help with your future transposition efforts. So if this was tricky and you didn't quite get it, maybe it'll gel a bit better after the next lesson. All right, so uh, please click like if you liked this and it was helpful, and subscribe for more piano video lessons. You might also want to check out some Christmas courting videos that have come up here in uh, November and December and find me on Patreon. Thanks for watching.